Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Only Bio. Presenting up the revision on the chapter Biotechnology. Friends, I have already started it. Uh, the earlier videos, I hope you have been watching it. So this is going to be the fifth part of Biotechnology, which has already been released even in Hindi. So do watch and in this series, we are going to talk something about the nucleic acids in detail. On the screen, you can see both the structure of DNA and RNA that have been shown with beautiful pictures. So we start off with RNA. DNA has already been discussed. You might be aware that RNA can be broadly classified into two groups as genetic RNA and non-genetic RNA. So the first one that is genetic RNA. In most plant viruses and in many bacteriophages, RNA performs the genetic functions. This is known as genetic RNA or viral RNA. Friends, this statement simply means that it carries a genetic information. Unlike that of in our case, in our case, the genetic information is present in the DNA and not in the RNA. So in our case, the uh, genetic material being present only in DNA. In our case, our RNA will be categorized as non-genetic RNA. So the second category is the non-genetic RNA and this is mainly involved in the protein synthesis. It is further divided into three types. Friends, what exactly does this mean? The information for controlling all the characters, all the body characters is present in DNA in the nucleus. And this information is going to be utilized for the formation of proteins by the RNA. So, the coded language of DNA is understood only by RNA. From this, we have to understand that just we have DNA is never going to be sufficient enough. DNA and RNA are equally important and this RNA is of three types. First, mRNA that is messenger RNA. Second, rRNA that is ribosomal RNA. Third, tRNA that is transfer RNA. So let's start understanding mRNA that is messenger RNA. Friends, it constitutes 6% of the total RNA content of the cell. So whatever is the amount of RNA per cell. So from that mRNA is only 6%. This is very important because this is often asked in the MCQs. It is synthesized that is produced in the nucleus on one of the strands of DNA. The synthesis that is transcription is aided by that is helped by an enzyme called as RNA polymerase. Thus the base composition is complementary to that of DNA molecule comprising the gene. Now from the two DNA strands only one is utilized for the formation of mRNA. So whichever strand carries the genetic information is going to be copied Okay, so when RNA polymerase plays its role so as to synthesize RNA, what happens is instead of thymine, we will find uracil there. And this particular thing is going to be complementary to the strand of DNA from where it has been copied. Or in other words, one of the DNA strand, it acts as a template and this is utilized by the RNA polymerase to build its own structure. And the length of the mRNA depends on the size of the gene. Friends, on the screen you can again see mRNA which is being shown in a very nicer way and the way it plays its role in protein synthesis. The mRNA molecule thus synthesized, it leaves the nucleus through the nuclear pore and reaches the cytoplasm. Here it gets associated with the ribosome. Now why does it get associated with the ribosome? Very easy because Ribosome is the site of protein synthesis. The mRNA molecules are large and made up of thousands of ribonucleotides with a molecular weight of 5 million. Now let's understand the functions of mRNA. As the name suggests, mRNA acts as a messenger in protein synthesis. Friends, on the screen you can see a very good picture depicting up the role of mRNA. You can see that from the nucleus that strand of mRNA has come out and it carries the genetic information in the transcribed manner 
from DNA in the nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. The information is carried in triplet nitrogen bases called as codons. So it forms a triplet that is a group of three. So a group of three nitrogen bases is called as a codon. Friends, you might be aware that there are 64 codons in totality. Each codon codes for a specific amino acid except of course the nonsense codons that will do it later. Thus the entire mRNA carries the information to form complete peptide chain that is called as a cistron. So that length of the mRNA which has the information for the formation of a complete peptide chain is called as the cistron. Friends, mRNA which is formed also is not really a uh, what you can say a refined version it is processed okay the processing of mRNA is done and then it takes up the form of a cistron friends hope you like it please subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed and do share it with your friends thank you for being with me